In the quiet town of Blender, Maine, the evening air was crisp as 15-year-old Nicole Cable stepped out of her cozy family home. She was the embodiment of youthful vibrancy, with a lightness in her step that only the anticipation of adolescence could bring. I'll be back soon, Mom, she called out, her voice a melody of innocence and freedom. Her parents, accustomed to their daughter's evening walks, felt a sense of ease as they watched her leave. Little did they know, this night would shatter the peace of their small-town life forever. As the sky turned from pink hues to a deep twilight blue, Nicole's parents waited, but their daughter did not return. Hours passed, turning their initial worry into a heart-wrenching panic. The dark night seemed to swallow the town as Nicole's mother tried to reach her on her cell phone, only to be greeted by the cold, impersonal tone of a switched-off device. Confusion and fear mounted with each unanswered call. Nicole, known for her reliability and bright spirit, had never missed her curfew without a word. As the clock struck midnight, the eerie silence of the house was palpable. Her parents' minds raced with terrifying possibilities. By dawn, with no sign of Nicole and her phone still unreachable, they knew something was terribly wrong. Desperation took hold, and they made the call that no parent ever wants to make. They alerted the police. Nichols' disappearance sent ripples of concern through the quiet streets of Blender. Neighbors whispered in hushed tones, and friends shared worried glances. The town, once a haven of tranquility, now echoed with the unsolved mystery of a missing girl. The police, with few leads to follow, prepared to delve into a case that would soon reveal a chilling reality hidden beneath the surface of social media connections. The search for Nicole Cable had begun, but little did anyone know. The key to unraveling the mystery lay within the virtual walls of her social media account, a realm where digital footprints whispered secrets and the truth lurked in the shadows of online personas. In the heart of Maine, the small town of Blender was more than just a cluster of homes and shops. It was a community where everyone knew each other's names, and secrets were hard to keep. Here, in this close-knit environment, Nicole Cable grew up, a beacon of joy and youthful exuberance. Nicole's journey began on August 12, 1997, in a modest hospital room filled with the cries of a newborn and the smiles of a hopeful mother. Her parents, though later divorced, had always enveloped her in love. The divorce had left a scar, but Nichols' resilience shone through. She found comfort and stability in living with her mother, stepfather, and three adoring younger sisters. As Nicole navigated the complexities of school life, she discovered passions that made her heart sing. The rhythm of music became her refuge, the cheerleading squad her second family. Her natural beauty and poise even led her to the world of modeling, working with a local company. These experiences molded her into a well-rounded individual, admired and loved by her peers. Her friends described Nicole as the embodiment of joy and kindness. With her infectious laugh and a heart as wide as the main skies, she had a unique ability to light up any room she entered. Even in the face of typical teenage challenges, Nicole maintained a positive outlook, finding silver linings in every cloud. As spring of 2013 approached, Nicole then 15, bubbled with the excitement of youth, the anticipation of school holidays, her upcoming 16th birthday, and the coveted driver's license set her heart aflutter. These were not just milestones, they were gateways to freedom, to a world waiting to be explored. But life in Blender was simple, almost too simple for a teenager with dreams as big as Nicole's. Beyond the few residential blocks lay the promise of excitement in larger towns, where most of her friends lived, and where life seemed more vibrant. Even her school, a 20-minute bus ride away, was a daily reminder of the smallness of her world. On a seemingly ordinary Sunday evening, Nicole, wrapped in the invincibility of youth, told her parents of her plans to meet a friend. It was a routine meeting, a brief escape from the quietness of Blender. As she stepped out into the fading light, her thoughts were on the evening ahead, unaware of the dark turn her story was about to take. In those final moments at home, her family saw her as they always had, a bright star ready to soar. 
They didn't realize that this night would be the pivot on which their world would turn, transforming their lives into a relentless search for truth amidst a web of digital shadows. May 12 was a day like any other in the small town of Blender, Maine, until the sun began to set, casting long shadows and painting the sky in shades of orange and purple. In the Cable household, a sense of normalcy prevailed as Nicole, full of the typical teenage zest, announced her plan to meet a friend. I'll be back soon, she said, her words light and carefree. Her departure was routine, a regular occurrence in the Cable family life. But as the evening progressed, the comforting blanket of routine began to unravel. Hours ticked by, and Nichols' promised return became a waiting game that tugged at her parents' hearts. The normalcy of the evening was slowly eclipsed by a growing unease. Nicole, known for her punctuality and communication, had never missed her curfew without informing her parents. Concern turned to worry, and worry soon morphed into fear as her mother repeatedly dialed Nicole's number only to be met with the lifeless tone of a turned-off phone. The night, once a time of rest and peace in Blender, transformed into a canvas of dread and uncertainty. Nicole's parents, engulfed in worry, paced the floor, peeking through curtains, hoping for a glimpse of their daughter returning home. The clock's ticking seemed louder, each minute stretching longer than the last. As dawn broke, the reality of the situation settled in with a chilling clarity. Nickel had vanished into the night, leaving behind a trail of questions and fears. Her absence was out of character, a deviation from the life they knew. The quiet streets of Blender, usually a source of comfort, now echoed with the silence of her absence. The decision to contact the police, made in the early hours of the morning, was one laden with a heavy heart. The call set in motion a series of events that would ripple through the town, awakening its residents to a nightmare they never imagined could touch their peaceful community. The police, upon receiving the report of Nicole's disappearance, found themselves facing a mystery. With no immediate leads or clues, the investigation began as a search for a missing teenager, but with each passing hour, the urgency intensified. The town of Blender, unaccustomed to such incidents, found itself at the center of a growing storm of concern and speculation. Nichols' parents, engulfed in a mix of hope and despair, clung to the belief that their daughter would walk through the door at any moment, laughing off their worries with a simple explanation. But as the light of a new day filled the sky, that hope dimmed, overshadowed by the grim possibility that something far more sinister had occurred. The police, now fully engaged in the search, began their investigation with the usual procedures, but it was only when they turned to the digital realm of Nicole's social media that they would find the first real clue. Unbeknownst to them, this clue would lead them down a path fraught with twists and unexpected revelations. As the sun rose over Blender, casting its light on a town shrouded in anxiety, the local police department began their day with a new pressing task. The disappearance of Nicole Cable was not just another case. It was a jarring anomaly in the quiet rhythm of this small town. The initial hours of the investigation yielded little more than growing concern and unanswered questions. Detective Sarah Jennings, a seasoned investigator with a keen understanding of the town's dynamics, was tasked with leading the search. She calmed through Nicole's life, looking for patterns, habits, or relationships that could provide a lead. Every friend, acquaintance, and routine was scrutinized, yet the pieces of the puzzle remained elusive. The breakthrough came when the investigation turned digital. Nichols' Facebook account, a vibrant college of teenage life, friends, and interests, became the focal point. Jennings and her team painstakingly sifted through posts, messages, and connections, searching for any anomaly, any sign that could point to what happened on that fateful night. It was in this virtual world that a chilling detail surfaced, a communication pattern with a certain Brian Butterfield, a name unfamiliar to Nicole's close circle. This discovery was like a crack in a window, offering a glimpse into a world Nicole's parents never knew. The detectives discovered two accounts under Brian's name, a puzzling fact that deepened the mystery. One account was active and seemed ordinary, reflecting the digital footprint of a typical teenager. 
The other, however, was a shadowy echo, recently deleted under suspicious circumstances. This revelation raised a myriad of questions. Who was the real Brian Butterfield? Why were there two accounts? And most crucially, what connection did this have with Nicole's disappearance? The puzzle was complex, and each piece seemed to lead to more questions than answers. Jennings knew the importance of this lead. In a town where everyone thought they knew each other, the digital realm revealed a hidden layer of interactions and personas. The detective understood that this new avenue could be the key to uncovering what happened to Nicole, and possibly who was responsible. The focus shifted to tracing the origins of these accounts, a task that required not only technical expertise, but also a deep dive into the lives of Nicole's peers. The police started to interview her friends, schoolmates, and anyone who might have had contact with her online. As they delved deeper, the image of Nicole began to take on new shades. She was no longer just the cheerful, outgoing teenager everyone thought they knew. Her online interactions revealed a more complex web of relationships, some of which were unknown to her family and friends. This digital clue was the first solid lead in a case that had baffled the community. It opened a door to a world that was intertwined with reality yet veiled in the secrecy of online personas. For Jennings and her team, it was a path they knew they had to explore, no matter how dark or winding it might be. The investigation had taken a turn, and the small town of Blender braced itself as the police dived into the depths of social media, a realm where truth and deception often danced a delicate, dangerous ballet. In the investigation room, the clock's ticking seemed to echo the urgency of the case. Detective Jennings and her team, after untangling the web of digital clues, found themselves staring at a name that had emerged from the shadows. Kyle Newby, a 23-year-old local resident. The discovery sent a ripple of shock through the team. Kyle was not just another name. He was already in jail, serving time for unrelated charges. Kyle's background painted a complex picture. He lived with his parents and his four-year-old daughter, over whom he had custody. His employment at a local company caring for the disabled added another layer to his seemingly ordinary life. But beneath this veneer of normalcy lurked a darker side, one that the detectives were beginning to uncover. As the team dug deeper, they learned of Kyle's past encounters with the law, minor infractions that never hinted at anything more sinister. However, in the context of Nichols' disappearance, these pieces started to form a more ominous puzzle. The turning point in the investigation came with the discovery of Nichols' body. It was a grim day when the news broke, casting a pall over Blender. Her body was found in a wooded area near Old Town, not far from the road, hidden beneath branches as if someone hoped she would never be found. The reality of her death sent shockwaves through the community, turning the missing person case into a murder investigation. The details of the crime scene were sparse, but one thing was clear. This was no accident. The police, now dealing with a homicide, had to tread carefully, piecing together evidence to build a case strong enough to bring the perpetrator to justice. Kyle Newby, already in custody for unrelated reasons, became the prime suspect. His connection to the case was initially unclear, but as the investigation progressed, pieces of evidence began to point in his direction. The puzzle that was Nicole's final days was starting to come together and Kyle was at its center. The revelation of his involvement sent shockwaves through those who knew him. Kyle, a father and a caretaker, seemed an unlikely suspect. Yet the evidence was building, and the police knew they had to pursue every lead, no matter where it took them. Detective Jennings, who had seen her fair share of cases twist and turn, knew the importance of solid evidence. The circumstantial connections were not enough. They needed concrete proof to link Kyle to the crime. The team intensified their efforts, coming through Kyle's past, his relationships, and his movements around the time of Nichol's disappearance. The quiet town of Blender, once a place where the worst crime was a stolen bicycle, found itself grappling with a reality far darker than anyone had imagined. The residents, who had watched Nichol grow up, now had to come to terms with the fact that her life had been cut short in such a tragic and violent way. 
As the investigation into Kyle Newby deepened, the community held its breath, waiting for answers. The police, determined to solve the case, worked tirelessly, knowing that each passing day was a step closer to uncovering the truth behind Nicole Cable's untimely death. In the heart of the investigation, amidst a tangle of questions and theories, lay the silent truths that only forensic evidence could reveal. As the town of Blender grappled with the harsh reality of Nicole's murder, the police focused on the minute details that could speak volumes about her final moments. The lad was a stark contrast to the chaos of emotions swirling around Nicole's case. Here, in this sterile environment, scientists worked meticulously, analyzing every piece of evidence gathered from the crime scene. The most significant breakthrough came from what seemed like an insignificant detail. Traces of DNA found under Nicole's fingernails. This DNA was a silent witness to a struggle, a desperate fight Nicole had put up in her last moments. The results sent a shiver down Detective Jennings' spine. The DNA matched Kyle Newby's. This discovery was the concrete evidence they had been searching for, a direct link between Nicole and Kyle that transcended circumstantial connections. As the team delved further, another piece of evidence contradicted the narrative that had initially been painted. Nicole's cause of death was determined to be strangulation, evident from the marks on her neck. This finding was at odds with Kyle's version of events, where he had claimed that Nicole had accidentally suffocated. These revelations were critical. They not only linked Kyle directly to the crime, but also suggested that he was not being truthful about the circumstances surrounding Nicole's death. The police knew they had to tread carefully, ensuring that every piece of evidence was thoroughly examined and corroborated. In the quiet town of Blender, the news of these findings began to seep through the community, bringing with it a mix of relief and horror. Relief that the investigation was making progress and horror at the brutal reality of the crime. The town, once a backdrop for peaceful, mundane life, was now the setting of a tragic story that had shattered its innocence. As the evidence mounted against Kyle, the police began to reconstruct the final hours of Nicole's life. The pieces of the puzzle were slowly coming together, painting a picture of deceit, betrayal, and a young life tragically cut short. Detective Jennings, who had seen the darkest aspects of human nature in her career, felt a heavy responsibility. It was not just about solving a case. It was about bringing justice to a young girl whose life had been so cruelly taken and offering some semblance of closure to a family torn apart by grief. The case against Kyle Newby was strengthening, but the journey to justice was far from over. There were still gaps to fill, questions to answer, and a trial that would determine the final outcome. The police continued their diligent work, knowing that in the world of criminal investigations, the truth was often hidden in the smallest details. In Blender, as days turned into weeks, the memory of Nicole Cable lingered, a stark reminder of the fragility of life and the shadows that can lurk beneath the surface of a seemingly peaceful community. The somber walls of the courtroom stood as silent witnesses to the culmination of months of investigation and anguish. The trial of Kyle Nube for the murder of Nicole Cable had gripped the town of Blender with a mix of dread and anticipation. Families, friends, and onlookers filled the benches, each person carrying their own bundle of emotions and questions. Detective Jennings, sitting among her colleagues, watched as Kyle was led into the courtroom. He appeared smaller, less imposing than the figure that had loomed large over the investigation. As the proceedings began, the air was thick with tension, a palpable mix of justice sought and sorrow felt. The prosecution laid out their case methodically, presenting the evidence that had been meticulously gathered over the past months. The DNA under Nicole's fingernails, the strangulation marks on her neck, and the inconsistencies in Kyle's story painted a damning picture. The prosecution argued that Kyle had not only lured Nicole under false pretenses, but had also taken her life in a brutal act of violence. Kyle's defense, on the other hand, sought to cast doubt on the evidence. They questioned the reliability of DNA testing and suggested alternative scenarios for Nicole's injuries. However, the evidence was compelling, 
and the defense's arguments seemed to do little to sway the jury. As the trial progressed, testimonies from friends and family painted a vivid picture of Nicole, a bright, loving teenager whose life was full of promise. Her absence was a void that echoed through the courtroom, a stark reminder of the life that was so senselessly taken. The turning point came when a colleague from Kyle's workplace testified, providing a crucial alibi that contradicted Kyle's claims. This testimony further weakened the defense's position, adding weight to the prosecution's narrative. When the jury finally retired to deliberate, a hush fell over the town. Blender, once a place where the most significant events were school football games and annual fairs, was now the center of a narrative filled with tragedy and loss. The verdict, when it came, was a release of the breath the town had been holding. Kyle Newby was found guilty of the premeditated murder of Nicole Cable. The courtroom, filled with a mixture of relief and sorrow, watched as he was led away, his fate sealed by the weight of his actions. Nicole's family, who had sat through every day of the trial, holding each other in silent support, found a semblance of closure in the verdict. Though it could never bring Nickel back, there was comfort in knowing that justice had been served. The trial's conclusion marked the end of one chapter but the beginning of another. For the community of Blender, it was a time to reflect, to mourn, and to find a path forward from the shadow of a tragedy that had forever altered the fabric of their town. As Detective Jennings left the courtroom, she felt the weight of the case lift slightly from her shoulders. Justice had been served, but the memory of Nicole, and the lessons learned from the investigation, would stay with her for years to come. The trial and conviction of Kyle Nube for the murder of Nicole Cable marked the closing of a painful chapter for the town of Blender, Maine. However, the aftermath of the tragedy lingered, leaving an indelible mark on the community and beyond. In the days following the trial, a palpable sense of grief and reflection swept through Blender. For many, the case had been a stark awakening to the dangers lurking within the digital age. Nicole's story had begun with innocent online interactions, a common aspect of teenage life, yet it had ended in a way no one could have foreseen. Nicole's parents, grappling with an unimaginable loss, channeled their grief into raising awareness about online safety. They became vocal advocates, sharing their daughter's story with other communities and schools. They spoke about the importance of monitoring online activities and understanding the real risks of digital interactions. Their message was clear. What happened to Nicole could happen to anyone. The local schools in Blender and surrounding areas responded by implementing more comprehensive internet safety programs. Seminars and workshops became regular events, educating students, parents, and teachers on the nuances of online communication, privacy, and the importance of being vigilant. In a poignant tribute to Nicole, her friends and classmates organized a memorial service. Balloons in her favorite colors were released into the sky, each one symbolizing a memory, a shared moment, a piece of a life taken too soon. The sight of the balloons drifting upward was both beautiful and heart-wrenching, a visual representation of loss and remembrance. As the community struggled to find normalcy in the wake of the tragedy, the impact of Nicole's story reached far beyond the town. Her case became a cautionary tale, cited in news articles and online safety campaigns, a reminder of the potential dangers of digital interactions. Detective Jennings, who had been at the forefront of the investigation, found herself reflecting on the case long after its conclusion. It had changed her, not just as a detective, but as a person. She saw the world differently now, aware of the hidden dangers that could be masked behind a screen. She also saw the resilience of a community that had come together in the face of tragedy, offering support and strength to one another. As Blender moved forward, the lessons from Nichols' case remained. Parents held their children a little closer, conversations about online safety became more frequent, and the community became more vigilant. The tragedy had altered the town's landscape, but it had also fostered a stronger, more aware community. In the quiet moments, Nichols' memory lingered in the streets of Blender. Her laughter, her dreams, her potential, all remained as echoes of a life that had touched so many. The tragedy of her loss was intertwined with a message of caution and awareness, 
a legacy that her family hoped would prevent another such story from unfolding. As Autumn painted the town of Blender in shades of red and gold, the community began a slow, collective journey of healing and reflection. The trial and conviction of Kyle Newby had brought some measure of closure, but the wounds left by Nicole Cable's tragic death were deep, resonating through the hearts and streets of this small town. In the quiet corners of Blender, people found solace in shared grief and mutual support. Candlelight vigils were held, where residents gathered, not just to mourn Nicole, but to stand together against the shadows of the tragedy. Stories were shared, tears were shed, and in the midst of sorrow, a sense of unity emerged, strengthening the bonds within the community. Nicole's family, though forever changed by loss, began to find small comforts in the memories of their daughter. Her room, still adorned with posters of her favorite bands and photographs of happier times, became a sanctuary where they could feel close to her. They found strength in each other and in the outpouring of support from friends, neighbors, and even strangers touched by Nicole's story. Detective Jennings, who had been a pillar of strength throughout the investigation, found herself reflecting on the case in the quiet of her office. The photos of Nicole, once prominent on her desk as part of the investigation, now served as a reminder of the fragility of life and the importance of her work. She took solace in knowing that her efforts had brought justice for Nicole, yet the bittersweet taste of that justice lingered. Schools in Blender and the surrounding areas continued their efforts to educate students about online safety. Nicole's story was often at the center of these discussions, serving as a powerful reminder of the real-world consequences of virtual interactions. The programs also focused on providing support for students dealing with grief, offering counseling, and a safe space to express their feelings. The local church played a crucial role in the healing process, offering services and gatherings where the community could come together to find peace and comfort. The pastor's words often echoed the need for forgiveness and understanding in the face of such a senseless act. As the anniversary of Mickle's death approached, the town planned a memorial in her honor. It was a tribute not just to her life, but to the resilience of a community that had faced darkness and emerged with a newfound awareness and strength. The memorial included a garden planted in her favorite spot in the park, with a bench inscribed with her name offering a place for reflection and remembrance. Through these acts of remembrance and unity, the people of Blender began to reclaim the peace that had been shattered by the tragedy. They understood that while the pain might never fully disappear, the way they came together in the aftermath was a testament to their strength and capacity for healing. Nichols' story, though marked by tragedy, became a catalyst for change and awareness not just in Blender, but in communities far beyond. It was a reminder of the impact one life can have, the importance of vigilance in an ever-connected world, and the enduring strength of a community in the face of adversity. As the seasons changed in Blender, painting the town in the vibrant hues of spring, the community began to look forward with a renewed sense of purpose. The loss of Nicole Cable had left an indelible mark, but it had also sparked a movement of awareness and unity that resonated beyond the town's borders. Nichols' legacy became a beacon of change. Her story, rooted in tragedy, had grown into a powerful narrative about the risks of the digital world and the importance of vigilance. Parents, educators, and community leaders continued to advocate for online safety, turning their grief into action to protect other young lives. In the heart of Blender, a special memorial in the local park stood as a testament to Nicole's memory. The bench, bearing her name, overlooked the blooming garden, a serene spot where people could sit, reflect, and remember the bright, spirited girl who had once walked among them. This place had become a symbol of the community's resilience and commitment to never forget the lessons learned from Nicole's story. Detective Jennings, having seen the case to its close, found herself frequently visiting the memorial. It was here, amidst the chirping of birds and the rustling of leaves, that she found a sense of peace. The case had changed her, instilling a deeper understanding of the complexities of her role and the profound impact of her work on the lives of those she served. In the local schools, Nichols' peers had grown into young adults, carrying with them 
the memories of their friend, and the awareness she had unwittingly imparted. They became advocates in their own right, sharing Nichols' story with younger students and emphasizing the importance of making smart, safe choices online. The annual candlelight vigil, now a tradition in Blender, continued to draw the community together. It was a night of remembrance and solidarity, a time to share stories, offer support, and reinforce the collective pledge to safeguard their children in an ever-evolving digital landscape. Nichols' parents, though forever marked by the loss of their daughter, found solace in the impact of their efforts. They had turned their deepest pain into a purpose, ensuring that Nichols' story would continue to educate and protect others. Their work in advocating for online safety had reached communities far and wide, turning their tragedy into a force for positive change. As Blender moved forward, the lessons of the past remained at the forefront. The town had been transformed by a tragedy, but it had emerged stronger, more connected, and more aware. The residents understood that while the digital world offered incredible opportunities, it also required caution and education. Nichols' story, once a local tragedy, had become a national conversation about the safety of young people in the digital age. Her legacy was a reminder of the power of community, the resilience of the human spirit, and the enduring love of a family for their lost child. In the quiet moments of reflection, the people of Blender knew that Nichols' spirit lived on. In the park, in the hearts of those she touched, and in the ongoing efforts to protect and educate. Her life, though cut short, continued to inspire and make a difference, a lasting legacy of a young girl whose story had the power to change lives.